Hi, my name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. And in front of me, I have two of the most capable digital desktop synths in the market right now. And I've got them here today because someone at some point asked me which one sounded warmer. And I hated that question so much that it got stuck in my head. And I decided to actually do a video on which one of these can sound warmer. It's a stupid question. I hate it. But after spending some time with these, I found the results to be a bit interesting. So this will be an opportunity to listen to these both do some things, make some observations and decisions about which sound we like and why. And um, hopefully it'll be informative. So some caveats before we get started, the architecture and how we'll be approaching this. The Novation Peak actually has an analog filter. Um, I had a hard time nailing down exactly what the architecture of this filter is. Um, I heard it's a sort of redesigned Base Station 2 filter. And when I looked into that, I heard that the designer of the Wasp filter worked on it. And um, it was just kind of hard to really like figure out exactly what to do to match this filter, which has uh, a lot of different choices on here. The uh, ASM Hydrosynth. We have a ton of different low pass filters we can choose from, including a ladder of uh, 12 pole and 24 pole, a fat 12 and 24, a MS 20, and uh, some other things. So we will be doing as much as we can to get as close as we can to the two sounds. And uh, we'll talk about what we did to get there. We will be using simple waveforms only. That means mostly saw, square, some uh, sine and triangle. And that's because warmth is one of those things that I think people somewhat erroneously associate with analog synths, completely analog synths, and probably analog synths that have VCOs as opposed to DCOs, uh, a voltage controlled oscillator versus a digital controlled oscillator, where a DCO tends to be more stable and less tuny, less uh, pitchy than a VCO. But we're not going to be using any wavetables, or we'll just be using mostly saw waves. Another thing that we have to keep in mind here is that I have sliders here for these that show a value from uh, 0 to 127, which is the range of the uh, MIDI protocol. Our filter actually has double that resolution because of the way that Novation implemented the uh, filter stepping. Over here, I don't have that quite so much. Uh, the filter actually shows the same readout uh, as the normal MIDI messages over here. So we'll be able to approximate that. But our envelopes are actually in milliseconds and in seconds. So um, we're going to do our best to match those by ear. The next thing that I notice is that this actually has slight exponential envelopes, meaning that they kind of ramp in a little bit as opposed to being linear. So we'll do our best using the curves that we have access to here to uh, match those as well. I have both of these running into a Mackie 1202 VLZ so I can switch between them uh, via a mute button and listen to them both at the same time. They're both going into an audio fuse interface from Arturia and um, they're both getting recorded to separate channels there through uh, a pair of line inputs. So hopefully there's no color happening over here. Uh, this mixer is very low noise and um, generally I've never heard it color the sound too much. So we'll be hearing pretty much exactly what's coming out of these. There is an index in the uh, in the description, so you can jump around into different sound examples if you want, and we'll be doing some extremely important tests at the very end, so stick around for that. We will uh, also near the end or interspersed be introducing some of the effects that are built in here. That adds a completely new level of subjectivity and difficulty in matching, but I think it is interesting to listen to how they both deal with things like reverb, chorus, and delay. If there's any other caveats that come up during this uh, that I've forgotten in this intro, I'll let you know. And uh, otherwise, let's get into some sound examples using a saw wave in polyphonic mode on both synthesizers. Okay, so the first thing we're going to listen to is the bass saw waveform on both of these, because I did not think that there would be a difference at all, but actually there is a little tiny bit difference. Um, I'm not going to try to trick you here. Um, I'm just going to explain what I'm hearing. Out of the bat, the ASM Hydrosynth saw is a little bit brighter than the saw from the Novation uh, Oxford oscillators, which are basically FPGAs that offer theoretically uh, increased resolution um, and less stepping. It's a sort of hand wavy thing, but uh, let's listen to them real quick. can hear a little bright edge on here. Make sure that you're listening with headphones and that you have the video resolution turned all the way up in the YouTube player. Okay, so how can we mitigate this? Well, there's a mode in here, if I hit voice, that can go to uh, warm mode. 
So let's turn this on and listen to them together again. So there is a slight difference between them still, but that warm mode on the uh, Hydrosense voice mode really does uh, take some of that digital high end, that sort of like precise, crisp high end off and make it more in line with the peak. So that's cool. The next thing that we want to uh, mess around with are uh, our filters. So um, before we get into that, let's make sure that we're only working with one saw wave, one oscillator so far on each thing. Key tracking is all the way up on both for our filter. And um, we are going to be using the 24 dB low pass filter over here. And then the 24 dB ladder filter over here. So um, warmth is a smooth high end body in the middle. I think that's what a lot of people think warm is. Um, and uh, it's a very ineffable misunderstood term. Um, it can come from a filter. It can come from EQ. It can come from saturation. Uh, the next step in this test is to start introducing some filter sweeps so that we can hear what the filters do to each thing individually. Okay, so let's start with the peak. And that was switching back and forth between them. Um, one of the things that I noticed immediately was when matching the settings here, so envelope amount all the way up and the filter uh, halfway down, that we get um, a pretty different experience of the envelope, the actual way that the envelope is dealing with the filter and where it ends up um, on a sustained level afterwards. The next thing we're going to do is introduce some attack uh, so we can hear the, how the envelopes differ from um, an attack standpoint. I said that this one had a bit of exponential curve, so we're going to listen to it and then try to match it over here. Okay, let's start with the peak, and I'm going to show you the waveform for this on screen so you can see what the envelopes look like different from each other. I've done my best to just uh, get them in there in terms of timing, um, but I want you to see what they actually are doing to the shape so that we can... Uh, you know, see what an exponential versus logarithmic or a slightly exponential versus logarithmic envelope looks like. Here is the peak. All right, I'm gonna use the waveforms that I have on screen to visually manipulate uh, and make adjustments to the curve of this attack envelope. And now we're a lot closer. So, very interesting to note that these envelopes have a little tiny bit of exponential curve to them. And I think that's what people associate with um, snappy envelopes. And I love it. I, I think exponential envelopes are the way to go. I use them in modular all the time. Um, I think they're incredibly uh, musical and organic sounding. But so far, these two are really, really similar to each other. Not a huge difference. So what can we do next? Well, let's start introducing some more oscillators. Okay, so now things are getting a bit more interesting. Uh, I just spent about 10 minutes dialing these in. So I actually brought in all three oscillators on both of these synths.
so far, my take on how these two sound um, when they're being pushed around is that this sort of has like this pocket that it lives in. The peak has this pocket that it lives in, and it's a very well-defined pocket. Um, it's it's tight and uh, and defined and um, has a sort of like, again, a smooth roll off on the top. Um, and it can sound bright, obviously, like it's it has no problem sounding bright, especially if you dig into the um, other uh, wave shapes. But um, it, it's it's sort of like like almost like it's got a compression on, compressor on it. It's got sort of this, this tonal compressor. Whereas the ASM Hydrosynth is a bit more open, um, a little less tightened into a particular zone. Um, you know, I I would say that to an extent. There is a quality, if I was going to define warmth, that the peak has in these settings that the hydrosynth doesn't. Yeah, it's really, really subjective. So let's do a few more tests. Let me cook something else up that we can talk about. Okay, in this test, we're going to be using the same chords. I know you're probably tired of them, but they uh, they serve a really good purpose of being um, sort of like just spaced out enough uh, to give us envelope action and also... Um, to uh, hear some uh, space in between. Um, so we're going to be using them again. I have now tried to match uh, envelope settings, filter settings, and chorus settings. Um, the chorus in the peak is glorious. And there are three flavors of chorus over here in the um, hydrosynth that have multiple settings. So I've tried to match them. We're still using three oscillators. Um, so let's go ahead and listen to what these sound like. We'll start with the peak. <laughs> So what I noticed from this, again, is the uh, flavor of the envelopes on the peak, um, that sort of condensed tightness that the peak represents, the sort of punchiness to it that uh, its envelopes and filter have. Um, but there's also something else uh, besides the chorus, and that's that the peak rings out a little bit. We have these envelopes all the way down, and take a look at this waveform. <laughs> can hear it almost like it has release which is very strange let's listen to the uh the hydrosynth hydrosynth just gets out of the way there's no lingering signal i could not tell you what is causing that i think it's a really weird sort of interesting thing um i don't think it's like some, I mean, it could just be the envelope shape of the decay on the peak. They could have dialed it in to have a particular flavor. I'm not 100% sure. I'd say the hydra is a little bit more precise in this uh, setting, which is nice. Okay, in this test, we're going to be using the same chords, but a lot longer. So we can hear a longer envelope uh, sweeping through um, the filter, uh, which I think is going to give you a little bit more time to ruminate on the quality of uh, the ex the exponential envelopes or the linear envelopes and also the way the filter sounds. So I have this set to a uh, ladder 24. Uh, we're on the 24 dB over here for the low pass, and we are using square waves this time. So a slightly different uh, wave shape, so you can hear what that sounds like. We'll start with the peak.
So I think we're hearing more of the same, um, that sort of compression of soundstage, um, the sort of upfrontness that the peak uh, has versus a more sort of, um, in some cases, gauzy open sound that the ASM hydrosynth has. But I think they both um, fill in the mid-range very nicely. And um, as somebody who has been using the hydrosynth almost exclusively over the last, I don't know, how long is time uh, in this last year? I don't freaking know. It seems like forever, but I guess it was just since last year. Um, I, I really, really, really like the peak sound a lot, but I've never like made a sound on the hydrosynth and it was like, it's not warm enough. Like, um, we, and again, we're not using anything except for basic waveforms and filters. We haven't dialed in any EQ settings, compression, saturation, um, anything like that, or reverb or any of the other stuff. Like that's all window dressing. Like that's all sort of like the stuff that you can do in a DAW. Uh, we're talking about bass oscillator sound and bass filter sound. They do sound different. There's no question. Um, and it's very interesting to hear the nuances and how they do sound different. If you've made it this far into the video, I'll let you know, I will be uploading um, these sound examples uh, lossless to um, wherever the link in the description says, so you can go check these out for yourself. Um, I'm going to introduce some reverb because I think the reverb on both these synths is really, really interesting. I was uh, in love with the peak reverb when I got it, and I still am. Um, but I want you to hear what this sounds like with some reverb on it. So let's do that. Okay, this is going to be really, really hard to match, uh, but I want you to hear what it sounds like when I have spent some time trying to match the reverbs on these, and uh, then we'll talk about what I think I like better, um, and or just what I've noticed, okay? We're going to start with uh, the peak. Okay, sorry if that was a little abrupt, but I don't want to spend all this time uh, just listening to the same clip over and over again. You can check the link in the description if you want to check them out. Um, so what do I notice? Well, I think that the reverb in the peak is incredibly well dialed in for its sound. It's like sort of like purpose made to sound good with the peak. And I've always thought that with it, um, it has a beautiful tone. Um, we have it at a two and I did not change any of the settings. I just turned up the time and the level. Um, over here, we're on a hall reverb um, with a little bit of pre-delay about three times, uh, three seconds uh, for the time. The tone is almost up at zero, and uh, we did some work on the high damp and low damp. Um, I find in the default mode, the hall reverb, which should be big and lush on this, uh, without a little bit of work on the high and low damp and the tone, kind of makes me feel like I'm on nitrous. Like there's this sort of like ringing buzziness to it in the high end. Uh, let me bring it in and we can uh, check that out real quick. weird sort of sort of like it sounds it sounds uh, I, for lack of a better term very digital um and that sucks because reverb is always such a really big important part of patches we do have some different um flavors of it here that we can choose from I don't know what it is. Um, uh, you know, I would love to hear a slight improvement to the Hydrosense reverb, but um, uh, let me be clear. Um, I am not talking shit about either of these synths. Um, I love my Hydrosense so much, and I really, really appreciate the work and sound that went into the peak. Um, I just think it's kind of interesting comparing these things directly and hearing um, 
what was done differently in two sort of, you know, mostly digital synthesizers. Uh, we're going to do a bass patch, I think, next, um, and just kind of listen to what that sounds like. God knows how long this video is going to be. Uh, let me get that dialed in, and I'll be right back. Hey, we're back, and I'm actually recording video. Um, all right, so bass line. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Let's start with the peak. Um, I have a triple oscillator stack. We have saw wave on the top. We have square wave on the, uh, the middle. Same uh, octave for both. We have a sine wave down at the bottom to give us that. And same thing over here. Um, I'm using a 24 dB filter over here with some envelope. And over here, I am using the LP Fat 24 filter, which should uh, actually provide a bit more bass. And uh, we're going to find out how that sounds. So again, starting with the peak. So I think that the Hydra actually has a bit more bass in this. I think this is a bit more, uh, peak is a bit more mid-range focus, and the uh, bass in the Hydra is really impressive. I want you to listen to what different filter types over here do, because we do have so many filter types on the Hydra. So let's listen to some of those as we uh, listen to this bass line. I'm going to start back at the ladder 12. <laughs> Letter twenty four Fat twelve Fat twenty four, which is what we were using before. Low pass gate, which sounds Really, really good. I love the sound of this thing. MS20. And then a 12 pole Steiner Parker. So the diversity of filters that we get on the Hydrosynth really allows you to dial in some very unique tones, and some of them sound really, really good on bass. So you can imagine that if we had like spent a bunch of time playing with those in our comparison to uh, the peak in some cases, we probably would have gotten some very interesting results. Um, I believe that in this mode, in this in this capacity, the Hydrosynth has the ability to really be a surgical instrument of uh, sound design um, because of all the filter types we can choose. And as we've heard, it can do bass like a beast. So that's really, really cool. Um, let's introduce a bit more uh, grit to this and see uh, what happens when we overdrive these sounds.
So I think Driven, they both uh, have a very big, uh, quote-unquote, analog characteristic to them, um, which is in sort of, I would expect, uh, the drive on the Hydrosynth is no slouch whatsoever, and um, that's not even getting into the distortion and overdrive features that we have in the effects. So uh, we had overdrive and distortion maxed on the Novation, sounded really, really good, especially when we get that resonance cranked up, we almost start getting like, you know, really distorted sort of 303 sounds, as you might expect. Um, yeah, uh, overall, they both are very capable in this respect. Um, no, no real winner here. <laughs> it sort of depends on what you like the sound of and what your uh, desire is for like a ton of different options versus, um, you know, one very competent option. All right. In this one, I have uh, a dual triangle pad set up with a little bit of um, sort of uh, fine pitch tuning on both. This one is set with oscillator one set to negative two cents. This one set to two cents. Over here, I have uh, the oscillators detuned a little bit. And I also have um the divergent drift on a little bit so that's going to introduce a little bit of oscillator instability one of them is a constant sort of almost lfo thing and the other one is every time you hit a key it uh diverges the oscillators just a little bit well, let's listen to them we're going to start with our friend uh the peak we have no filter on right now by the way um it's just a nice raw waveform <laughs> I think it's really interesting when you look at the waveforms for these, um, how sort of even the peak is compared to the Hydra. The Hydra has sort of some spikes and uh, more sort of differences in its waveform than the peak does. They sound almost identical though. So uh, a classic, you know, sort of warmth thing is detuning your oscillators and getting a little bit of that swimmy sound. And um, they both perform admirably at that, but they're obviously doing it in slightly different ways. In this one, we're going to be listening to a lead with an LFO on it. We have a triple stack oscillator all in saw mode. Uh, third um, oscillator is detuned down an octave. Second oscillator is at a uh, semi seven semitones up. <laughs> So really not a huge difference you can hear between these two. Let's go ahead and adjust this lead a bit to be a, more, a little bit more leady and uh, check back into it. Okay, same lead sound, a little bit of adjustments. We have saw square saw, uh, same octave stack. We have um, some filter envelopes going on. Um, same thing over here. We're using the three layer, uh, that's filter type because I found it was the closest. Tried to match these as close as possible. What I want you to listen to is not so much the differences, but how each one handles the same task. And ask yourself whether or not, um, you know, the difference is a noticeable enough for you to care. Thank you. 
the peak has a very, again, even sound, a little gritty, kind of like fits in this little pocket. Kind of reminds me a lot of like some Boards of Canada or tobacco stuff. But man, the Hydra is right there with it. If I hadn't been listening to these right next to each other, I wouldn't think anything of this. Like, I wouldn't, th there'd be nothing there for me to, like, complain or grab onto about this sound. There's, and there still isn't. It's completely capable. I think they're both fantastic synths. Um, you can make your decision based on what you've heard here. And um, if you have more suggestions of, uh, like, tests, um, I guess I'll hear them. Like, this was not a very fun video to make for a lot of reasons. And um, one of them is going to be, uh, I'm sure, the comment section uh, telling me how I did this wrong. Sorry, uh, this is not exactly my best thing to do. I that said, I did think it was very, very interesting to try to match these. Um, I was always trying to match the Hydrosynth to the peak because the challenge here, I think, starting from the beginning, was that the peak was going to be the warmer synth because it's got an analog filter and it's got the Oxford oscillators. And um, coming out of this, I will agree that I think the peak has a very nicely balanced tone, tight around the mid-range, um, very in a pocket, like um, a very well-defined, well-thought-out overall topology of sound. Now, does that mean the Hydrosynth doesn't? Absolutely not. The Hydrosynth is insanely capable, and we really only um, were hobbled in terms of our sound design in this, in this test here by trying to match filter types based on um, sort of like, you know, db poles and and knowing a little bit about what the peak filter is the fact of the matter is the hydrosynth offers a huge range of tonal possibilities so you have like a billion different options over here with a much more robust um, effects engine and over here you have this sort of refined um oxford sort of sound for lack of a better term with some very very well considered effects that match the tone of this thing extremely well they're very different in how they approach things and they're both unique despite the fact that they can both do very very similar things uh, there are other things that um, will make you want to hopefully consider each one of these synthesizers besides um, whether or not a saw wave through a low pass filter sounds good. <laughs> um, and that's all I got to say about that. Thank you for watching. Check the links in the description if you want to check out these sounds for yourself. I hope this was informative. I hated making this video. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day. All right, everybody. I know I said I'd be doing some never before seen testing. Here we go. This is floor camera take one. We're going to find out which one of these is the warmer synth. All right. Peak. We got about 70 degrees. 70 degrees. We're hitting 70 degrees. Do I see 71? 71.2. 72.5. We got 72.5, 72.3, 72. We'll call it 72. Let's do the Hydra synth. Hydra, 72. 72.9. 73. 73.9, 75, 76 degrees, 77 degrees, 77.5 degrees. Do I see 78? The Hydrosynth wins. The Hydrosynth is the warmest synth. Mia, come here. Come here. I need you to tell me which one's warmer. I know. This is really important. Which one's warmer? Cool. Thanks. Thank you.